supply of water not only to our school but very important to the community that lives on here our borders and then thirdly it's a, it is about sustainability it's about modeling something to our students that about how we care for our environment how we conserve that very precious resources uh, like water and how we reduce our, our load on the community our, our footprint of demand uh, as I like to put it that way and this celebrates the fact that we're reducing our pull on the city and we are contributing in a significant way to the development of our city. Uh, not only that, and I think Chris is going to say more about later, but this becomes a living teaching tool, a living laboratory that our students can engage with, a hands-on experience to understand how do you go about uh, preserving resources, how do you go about uh, harnessing precious resources like water. Hopefully it will teach them critical thinking about the space and what our role in the guardianship of our planet, what our environmental responsibilities are and what our stewardship is and how can we better steward the resources that are, are given to us. And I think, think this speaks loudly as a teaching tool. I want to particularly just thank Dave Vermeule and when Chris is asking us, well, you know, who's the driver of this project? I think we all had it in the back of our mind, but Dave was the one who eventually said, guys, this needs to be a focus. We said, you're mad. We have to think about power. And Dave, very quickly, because he's a numbers man, explained the turnaround in terms of investment. Uh, and, and Dave was the one that brought it uh, to life. So Dave, to you and your team, to Alan Duncan in his absence, uh, uh, a huge thank you for bringing this project to life, for prioritizing it uh, and make sure it's going. Now before I, I uh, just say a few words about our guest of honor, I do want to invite Chris Coway to come forward. Uh, Chris is um, obviously he and his company are at the forefront, particularly working with schools in this space. So he has seen this, these projects go up all around the country. Um, he did a notable uh, installation uh, in a certain school in Cape Town, which I won't mention. Um, uh, but, but that was the reason if we didn't do it, we wouldn't have water. So that was a different reason. But Chris, again, welcome to St. Germans. Thank you for your huge investment of wisdom, uh, your intellectual capacity, but also your team for putting this together. Why don't you just say a few words uh, about this incredible moment? Thanks very much, Stuart. You know, uh, it's first congratulations to St. John's College for actually taking the step. Having worked with probably about 10 major schools in South Africa, I will say that you were the fastest at the starting blocks to get this decision done. Um, I do recall, I said to Stuart, I met him up at St. Albans College uh, at the end of October last year, and there were about 10 headmasters that were uh, wanted to know about the, the plant there. Stuart walked into the plant with me and he just said, we're going to do it. Now, I've heard that from a number of people in my life that say, we're just going to do it and it tends to take a long time. Well, I can tell you two weeks later, Dave said to me, where's the business case? We want to start now. And that also is a very interesting statement because many people say we want to start now and it takes a long time. Dave was dead serious. It was a Friday afternoon in November. He said we need to start the Indian Field Project on Tuesday next week. So, first of all, to <laughs> St. John's College. Really, you took, you took us under your wing. You, uh, you took us into your faith uh, to do the project. Um, we are genuinely, genuinely thrilled with the outcome of this. When Dave and I walked across the field here about three weeks ago, Dave said to me he's seen construction go on in South Africa um, in a certain way and he said, you know, he said you've been working here for four months and we haven't seen anything really because we've been working underground. And, I, and, and it's a tribute to, to the team and our team 
for the amount of underground stuff we had to do right from the bottom of the property here to the top. But Dave said, you know, within three weeks, he said there's something here that you marvel at when you walk across this Mitchell's field here. And it is truly, it is one of our really attractive water plants that we've actually built in South Africa. And so thank you for the opportunity to do that. One of the things I always say to folks at these meetings is that, you know, no matter how much money you spend on putting this together, and it is a fair chunk of money, and Dave's correct that the return on this is actually one of the best business cases I've ever worked with in my business life. You generally get your money back in 24 months. 24 months you get your money back because you don't pay the council for water they don't generally deliver. So one of the things I always look at here is the learning experience. Do you know, and no matter how much money you spend, the intangible for learners is incredible. One of the things that's tough in the South African academic world in my mind is that too many learners leave the educational institutions without understanding the value of water, the composition of water, and how precious it is to your life. And I'm thrilled that Rob's here in the audience here, and I know Rob's got his first set of learners starting in a club on Tuesday next week. And for me, the biggest value that you can get for us and for the learners is that they're going to participate in what you've actually invested in here. And they will leave the school more enriched in my mind uh, than, than where they are perhaps today. So in closing, there, there's a couple of things we like to do. You will see a water bottle on the table there um, that uh, we would ask everybody to take one of these water bottles. And after the, the plant has been blessed and we've opened the plant, to take that and fill that with water. At some of the schools I've been to in South Africa, people have a genuine belief that uh, if they get ill, they come to the plant and they get the water. I can't promise that there's actually medicinal uh, compounds in it, but the fact they do. So our, our contribution to use, one, the water bottle. Two, you will see over there, you can have a look. We've donated a water a fountain that we built uh, in the last couple of weeks to the school for the learners and anybody else to come and fill their water bottles. It is water directly from the plant. Um, and I do thank my learned friend here, our civil engineer, Bruce, who came up with the idea to put all that together. So thank you, Bruce. Thank it's, uh, you. It was well done. So in closing, Stuart, thank you to, to you and, and Dave and, and St. John's College for the opportunity to do this. Um, we're thrilled that we added it to the family of our water plants. Chris, a real pleasure working with you and your team.